It's an amazing thing to me that I go to work and parents actually let me take care of their babies. We're here at Texas Children's Hospital to answer questions that nobody else can. We're going to get all the really tough cases, and that's exactly what we should do, because we have the opportunity and the responsibility to make things better for babies, not just here at Texas Children's Hospital, but find out answers that improve our ability to take care of babies everywhere. My daughter, Leah Marie, she is a fighter. I didn't expect her to come out, you know, as well as she did, or even alive at that, because my placenta had ruptured and she wasn't getting the oxygen that she needed. I go to the emergency room in Victoria, where I work, and they're like, we gotta have this baby now. We have no time to get to Houston. Your baby's in a lot of stress. We have to get her out. Before they even delivered her, they asked me, you know, where do, where do you wanna go? The first thing I thought was, she needs to go to the best place. They said to Texas Children's, and I was like, yes. When we have a baby that demands a lot of resources, they should be at a place that has a lot of resources. So for us, it's the right baby at the right place at the right time. 70 to 80% of our patients come into the NICU via kangaroo crew transport. We do about 1,600 transports a year. That comes to about five a day. I'm gonna come in through the side. We take a whole ICU with us in our ambulances and on our plane. So we are actually transporting a neonatal intensive care unit to their baby. It's frightening at first because, you know, the baby's in this box and uh, there's so much beeping going on, so much stuff hooked up to her. But I know that she's going to not only the best place, but she's going to a place where, you know, I can call anytime, I can visit anytime. It's a very humbling experience to take part in this critical stage in people's lives. And so we do everything we can to uh, honor that and to let the parents know that everything's going to be OK. And let us take care of your baby for just a little while until you can get there. We're surrounded by incredible resources, intellectual resources, physical resources. But in order for us to succeed, we have to be able to sit down in the room and look at the evidence together. And what we do is we set a course. The multi-D meeting is the collaboration with the fetal center. You can pre-plan treatment for what you think may happen, but once the baby gets here and you evaluate their respiratory status or their cardiac status, the course of treatment you know, varies. So it's important to go back to that team and say, you know what, this is what we anticipated that was gonna happen, and this is the actual treatment that we're doing. The patient was born uh, via C-section, required just routine resuscitation. Because this baby can have something behind that we don't know exactly what it is. Overall, uh, Dr. Kaiser is at the bedside show. There has to be the utter commitment to always be getting better. So you have to establish the relationship between the different disciplines. So nursing, neonatology, respiratory therapy, and then across the disciplines. The reason we challenge each other is because we come from different perspectives. Nurses have a strong voice at Texas Children's. This is the first hospital where I've worked um, that actually encourages, supports, and promotes um, nursing involvement. The reason that the nurses are so important as part of our team is because they live at the bedside. They know the parents, they know the baby. When I come and see a sick baby, I see them for a relatively short period of time. But the critical thinking that can go on between nursing and the physician is really important because we can bounce things off each other. Consistent care is very important, which is nice to know that you can request a primary nurse so that you know that the nurse knows your baby and your baby learns who's taking care of them as well. They educate you and um, keep you in the loop. There's no dumb question. They're there to tell you everything that's going on with your baby. What's our heart rate now? The SIM program here is fantastic, and it's critical because you work on workflows, and you put it down on paper, and you say, you'll do this and you'll do that. But the way you do something complex with a lot of people that have complementary skills is to actually do it. I was hoping we could show a perfect example of close communication with the calling of Epi. We run simulations for every possible scenario that we could think of, just to make sure that our staff were prepared for anything possible. What they allow you to do is learn by your mistakes before you make the mistake on the baby. 
you do it, it's videotaped, you come back to the room, you have a facilitator, you go over what you thought worked well and what didn't, so that you got a cold the first time you see it in a baby. It's really important with parents that have already missed the opportunity to have a normal newborn to help them be in the loop. Family-centered care is a big deal. Miss Mahoney, watch this. Mm -hmm. 10 days ago, he was at one, and now he's at what? 1.17. So his biggest problem is not his lung. Nutrition. It's his nutrition, that's right. We include the parents in everything, and then we inform them about what they can do to help their baby do better. Sometimes, not everything goes exactly the way you would like. And I would be lying to you if I told you that it didn't matter, that it still doesn't hurt. Quite frankly, if it didn't, it would make me nervous, because it's part of the reason you get better. With the outcomes that aren't as good as you'd like, the patient, their baby, has a problem. Well, the only thing worse than, than having to tell him is to tell him anything but the truth. Come, come on in. Come on in. Come on in. You must be... Uh, the grandfather. I got some hard questions to ask. And you can ask him, because we My daughter's can... up in Dallas. You know, she went up there on uh, yesterday morning. Because and things were good. Things were good, well, kind of stable. Yeah. And, yeah. While the infection could be causing him to be worse, I can't guarantee that, because the other thing that's going on is that we used to have a chest tube in here draining, right. and we don't anymore. It must be shocking to you what he looks like. But I've seen patients look like that when their lymphatics can get home and find their way home. You never would have known they would be that way. But well, I can't guarantee you that he's going to get better. you got to tell them the truth, even if it's sometimes painful. You treat them like people, get the entire family engaged, and work with the mother to make certain that even when their baby is sick, they're understanding how to be a mom. And the one thing that the mother can do is provide us breast milk, because in this case, breast milk isn't just nutrition, it's medicine. A lot of the babies are on donor. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're using like 30-something bottles. Milk not only provides nutrients like carbohydrates and fat and, and protein, but it also provides um, the immune factors and antibodies that help these babies. But because these babies are so small, we can't give them two or three ounces at each feeding. And so we add those additional calories and nutrients to mom's own milk. It's amazing to watch her go from like this one pound baby to now she's almost three pounds. And I think we've passed so many hurdles by just, you know, giving her breast milk. It's helped her tremendously. The mom picks up whatever bugs the baby's exposed to, and she starts producing antibodies to fight that. That antibody, specific to that bacteria, goes into her breast milk and is passed on to the baby. So they have less risk of uh, infections. It's just so amazing. She's learning how to become like a baby, and then I'm learning how to become a mother and help take care of her while they're taking care of her as well. It's, it's a very emotional experience. In a study we did here at Texas Children's, we also found that by just having her baby close to her, it increased mom's milk supply. Kangaroo Care started as a way to provide a natural incubator. They have that skin-to-skin -skin contact. If the babies got cool, mom's core body temperature would go up and the babies would warm up. If the babies got too warm, mom's core body temperature would go down. For the mother, they're much more relaxed. They're less stressed about their baby's condition. We want the families, when they leave, we want you to not be able to tell that they were sick or premature. So good neonatal intensive care is associated with outstanding supportive care because this whole thing is stressful to families. We have occupational therapists, physical therapists, social workers. Single patient rooms have great natural light and ceilings acoustically engineered so that they minimize sound. We actually have a group of parents called the Family Advisory Council. We consult them to make certain that we're taking into account the eye and the mind of the family. The bottom line is you're surrounded by a lot of smart people that are passionate about what they do.
we've done all these wonderful things and all these interventions, but they really don't mean that much until you see the end result. And you see those babies, they're going home and they're in a better place than they were when they came in. Every situation presents itself with differences in how you care for people and who you're caring for, but I, it's all care. We're their partner. I want them to feel like I was with them, I understood them, I could get in their shoes and say, gosh, if it were my baby, here's what I would want. There's no love like you have for a child. And just going through the experience being in the NICU, it's like you care for them so much more. Now I know the meaning of love because, you know, she came to this world and we saved her life and she's doing great.